Hello everyone, welcome. I'm so glad you're here because today we're going to be watching, you guessed it, some more Star Trek The Original Series. Today we're watching an episode called A Piece of the Action, and it seems pretty self-explanatory. I think we are probably going to see some action. So let's get to it. Thank you guys for watching this episode with me, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy. I have received vocal contact from an official station. They relate us to a man named Oxlix. His title is Boss. Boss. This is uh, Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Am I speaking with Boss? Yes, unfortunately the Horizon was lost with all hands shortly after leaving your planet. I'll explain it in more detail when I see him. Spark, McCoy, we're beaming down. Standard equipment. <laughs> Time to go. The Horizon's contact came before the non-interference directive went into effect. They must have interfered with the normal evolution of the planet. It will be interesting to see the results of the contamination. So somebody went against the Prime Directive and gave these people some technology before they were ready? So we're going down to recontaminate them. If the damage has been done, Doctor, we are here to repair it. How do they repair that kind of damage, though? Oh boy, it's a costume department episode. I've seen pictures of the old days that look like this. Passers by guy are just randomly... I believe, firearms. Yeah. Okay, you three. The mafia? Let's see you petrify. Put your hands over your head. You ain't gonna have no head to put your hands over. Is this a, a civilization where the mafia is pretty much the... They are the government? Now that's a weapon. Uh, be careful of that. A heater, huh? Hey, the boss will love that. Uh, that's not a heater. He said some of the boys would meet you. Okay, we're meeting you. Well, those firearms are not necessary. Don't give me those baby blue eyes. What? <laughs> I don't go for that innocent routine. Sir, does everyone here carry firearms? I never heard such stupid questions in my life. Get moving. Down the street. Scared back there. What's the matter? You guys never saw a hit before? Sir, there are several questions I would like to ask. Ask the boss. I don't know nothing. I would I would probably just leave. I guess some of that ice cream though first. I love the bright pinks that they have. Hey, on when's here. the boss gonna do something about the crummy street lights around here, huh? A girl ain't safe. Yeah, and how about the laundry pickup? Interesting that they're complaining about the street lights and the laundry and not about the guns and the violence. Got him, boss. No sweat. All right, bring him in. You're, um, Mr. Oxmix. That's me, pal. They call you the boss, Mr. Oxmix. The boss of what? Boss of my territory. I got the biggest in the world. You're the government here? What government? Like I told you, I got the territory and I run it, that's all. But there are other bosses, other territories. Maybe a dozen or so. Does that include, if I may ask, a gentleman called Krakow? How do you know about Crackle? He hit us, boss. You hit him back, you hear? Hard. I'll take care of it. Very interesting. Where'd you get this? That's the book. The book. They left it. The other ship, the Horizon. Astonishing. An entire culture based on this. Is that book like their Bible now? I brought you down here so you could help me, not for you to ask me questions. What was the purpose of them leaving these people with these books and information? I was thinking. So here's the deal. You give me all the heaters I need, then I'll take over, and all you have to do is deal with me. And so you can carry out an aggression against your neighbors? What aggression? I gotta make some hits. I want you to help me hit them, that's all. <laughs> Mr. Oxmix, my orders are quite explicit. I'm gonna give you just eight hours to give me the things I want. Or else what? I'm going to call up your ship and have them pick you up in a box. Well, if they took, I guess if they took their communicators away, they can't just leave. That's frustrating. Just let these people do get out. Like, you're on your own. Have fun with that. Well, all you have to do is give me about 100 of these fancy heaters and we'll have no more trouble. Out of the question. All right, burn them. Now hold it. Jeez. It's a communication device. How does it work? It's like a flip phone. 
Hey, you. <laughs> the ship up there. I got your captain and his friends down here. If you want to see them alive again, you'll send me down a hundred of these fancy heaters you got. I'm going to give you just eight hours to get me the goods I want, or I put the hit on your friends. You understand? I don't know. <laughs> He's like, a what? Ten Hadley, check the language banks and find out what a heater is. Oh, he doesn't even know what they want. They evidently seized upon that one book as the blueprint for an entire society. As the Bible. Mm-hmm, exactly. It's their Bible. This society must become united, or it will degenerate into total anarchy. And the Federation is responsible. We've got to do something to straighten this mess out. This, uh, this card game is a kid's game. You think so, huh? Play a real game. It's a man's game, but of course, probably a little beyond you. I can play anything you can figure out. I'm familiar with the culture on Bed Antares. It's well, fine. I don't know of it's any fine. <laughs> Just let me do my thing, okay? The name of the game is called uh, Fizbin. The second card is turned up, except on Tuesday. On Tuesday? Oh, look what you've got two jacks. you got a half Fizbin already. <laughs> well, now, what you need now is either a king and a deuce, except at night, of course, when you need a queen and a, and a four. Except at night. He's just making stuff up. And you'd get another card, except when it's dark, when you'd have to give it back. If it were dark on Tuesday. Spark, what are the odds in getting a royal fisman? I've never computed them, Captain. Well, they're astronomical, believe me. Just make something up, Spock. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. That... Was all of that really necessary if that was their end goal? <laughs> oh, they have old arcade machines, slot machines. Oh, that's so cool. Listen, Pally, this could either be a taxi or a hearse. Do you know what I mean? I'm beginning to get the idea. Ah, oh, well, that gun didn't last very long, did it? Simply adjust the frequency, throw this switch, and the Enterprise should answer. That was the Jailbreakers with their latest recording. And very simple. Enterprise, this is Mr. Spock. Lieutenant Uhura here. Oh, he got it. Notify the transporter room two to beam up these coordinates. Oh, Mr. Cracko. Other boss guy. Well, this complicates things. Well, 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 well. And you? Cracko, Jojo Cracko. You want to make a deal? Hey, I like that. That's sharp, as our bow. Sharp, boss. They have the same book. Now you want heaters, and then you'll want, um, and uh, then you'll attack the other bosses and uh, take over the whole planet. Wrong. You give me what I want, and I'll cut you in for, say, um, a third. He has no use for that. This planet has to be united. Let's sit down. You, me, Bella, discuss this whole matter. You watch it, Kirk. The book tells us how to handle things. And there's the problem. What do you think, we're stupid or something? Oh, I don't think you're stupid, Mr. Cracko. I just think your behavior is arrested. I've never been arrested in my whole life! <laughs> I'm sorry, Cracko. No deal. Put him on ice. That's probably not good. We need to get rid of these books. And I still want to know why the Horizon gave them those books specifically. How did how did it get screwed up so bad? Did they get in trouble for what they... I know it was like a hundred years ago, but... Did they get it reprimanded for what they did? Did Starfleet even know about what they did? Rackles, put the bag on your captain. Why would he put a bag on our captain? Kidnapped him, you dope. We'll call a truce. Uh, you, you come on down. My boys will spring Kirk, and then we'll talk about giving me a hand. We shall arrive in your office within ten minutes. You mean you're gonna this trust him? This is a him? big old mess. We must have the assistance of someone indigenous. We are therefore forced to trust. I don't know. What are you doing, Kirk? I'm not sure if subtlety is, uh... What is this Looney Tunes crap? Wing! <laughs> well, he's got a gun back. I mean, good job. 
Energize. Oh. Going back into the fray, aren't we? You know what to do. Don't worry, boss. They can't do nothing till they're through sparkling. <laughs> yeah, they gotta sparkle first before they can move. Well, that did not go the way that Spock anticipated. I understood we had an arrangement. A truce. I was hoping you'd think that, dummy. <laughs> Cooperative man in this world is a dead man. And if you don't keep your mouth shut, you're going to be cooperating. Off the guns. Drop them. Move down there. <laughs> I'll be taking this back. Logic and practical information do not seem to apply here. You admit that? To deny the facts would be illogical, Doctor. <laughs> well, now that we have Bella, I'm going to put the bag on Krakow. Get out of the clothes. Nobody's going to put the bag on me anymore. He's playing by their rules now. <laughs> Speaking in a tone and a language that they will understand. Oh, look at our boys look so snazzy. <laughs> Where's the starter? There's the starter. Yeah. I believe they had a device known as a, a, a clutch. I wouldn't know how to drive this car either. And where would you drive <laughs> he's going in reverse well what's mccoy doing he doesn't get a oh i don't know what they're doing wrong but they're doing something wrong i've never driven a stick shift or anything like that that was unpleasant you are an excellent starship commander <laughs> but as a taxi driver you leave much to be desired <laughs> it was that bad it was pretty bad and I wasn't even in the car. If we can get close enough to them, we should be able to render them harmless with reasonable rapidity. Jeez. You're gonna hit Crackle? Out here? You open up and you'll be scrapped from every window on the street. Out of the mouth of babes. Who are you calling a babe? I'm calling you a babe. You calling me a babe? Yeah, I'm calling... I'm calling you a babe, but there's nothing personal. Sit down. <laughs> What's in it for me? What do you want? A piece of the action. All right, young man, we'll guarantee you a piece of the action. I like his hat. He reminds me of Fifel from... You don't know what to do. ...an American tale. So he's a distraction? Up on me, huh? How do you like that? Daddy, Daddy, I hurt myself! Daddy, Daddy, I hurt myself! That's it, let's go. I'm on my Daddy! He's a cute kid, ain't he? Daddy! Wait a moment. What have they done? What have they done to you? What have you done? That worked out really well. <laughs> well, so far. We're not out of the woods yet. There was your action. <laughs> now we're talking. I was wondering how I was going to get you back and hear you deliver yourself. Well, now what? Mr. Krakow, I don't, uh... Not be playing with those. How does this thing work? All right, Krakow, we don't have time to show you how to play with toys. What do you think we're here for? You got a cut of your deal? Peanuts! To an outfit like the, uh, Federation. Right? Right. <laughs> and you cooperate with us, and, uh, maybe we'll cut you in for a piece of the action. Thought you guys had laws. No interference. Who's interfering? We're taking over. <laughs> yeah, we're not interfering. We're just taking over the whole thing. We help one guy take over the planet. He pulls the strings and then we pull his. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh. Sit down. He's walking the walk and talking the talk. All right, it's a deal. Call your ship, bring down your boys, and whatever else you need. All right, Scotty. Uh, we made a deal with Krakow. Do you think that's wise, sir? Sure. He's standing about 12 feet in front of me. Scotty, I'd like to show him the ship. Her is caught on. <laughs> you got all that, uh, Scotty? Aye, Captain. You mean you're going to start sending down your boys now? Not exactly. <laughs> He's 
is going for a little ride. So he gave the coordinates of um, Krako by saying that he's 12 feet in front of him kind of thing, I, I believe. So they know which one to beam up. I want to know what happened. It looks like we put the bag on you, doesn't it? <laughs> I got right. You mind your place, mister, or you'll be wearing concrete galoshes. What? You mean cement overshoes? Aye. I don't understand either of those. The only thing I can think of is they would kill someone, bury them upside down, and put concrete over their grave. They'll have concrete shoes. <laughs> Please someone explain that to me. Maybe just drive backwards. It might be easier. Hey, wake up. You all right? The fed snatch crackle. They're gonna move in unless we stop them now. Uh, Bella's mixed up in this somehow. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna hit his place. <laughs> Knowing Crackle, he'll probably send him back on a blotter. Wrong again, Oxnix. Now they gotta get this guy up on the ship, huh? All right, Spock, I'll cover him. <laughs> now listen, sweetheart, the Federation's moving in. We're taking over. You play ball, we'll cut you in for a piece of the pie. Yeah, sure. All you had to do was explain it to me. Kirk Enterprise. Enterprise? We're gonna make some old-style phone calls from this locale. So you, uh, locate the man on the other end of the blower and give him a ride to this flop. What? Can't do, sweetheart. Can do, Captain. Get on the blower and call the other bosses. They're gonna send all of them up. Genius. Yeah, you bet your life I got a lot of nerve. What are you gonna do about it? Oh, I thought they were gonna beam them all up to the Enterprise. Well, maybe eventually they will. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> he is just right in enemy territory. Hey, Captain, that ain't fair. Yeah, I would advise you to keep dialing, Oxmix. <laughs> Spock's getting in character. <laughs> We hit Bella's place and nobody comes out alive. I want my pants. <laughs> now the Federation's taking over, whether you like it or not. From now on, it's going to be under one roof. You're going to run it like a, like a business. I hear a lot of talk, but all I see here is you and a couple of your boys. I don't see no Federation. Pepper's got a point. Right. All we ever seen is them. I only saw three guys in that ship. Maybe there ain't no more. Well, we could send you back and we could introduce you to all 400 of them. 400 guys, Dad. Hey, that's my boys. They're making a hit at this place. No, uh, oh, nobody's great. going no place. Let me call my ship one last time and say goodbye. Well, all right, go ahead. Put the ship's phases on stun. Fire up burst in a one block radius around these coordinates. They, they should have sent him up to the, well, I mean, this is a nice backup plan, but. What if he wasn't able to call Scotty? What if they didn't allow him? They should have sent all those guys up to the Enterprise, taking away all the weapons. Hey, that's some trick. Now, what was this syndicate deal you were talking about? I'm a peaceful man at heart, but I'm sick and tired of all these hits. Now I was thinking, if there was just one, Maybe somebody like you is the top boss? Hey, Bella. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I was thinking, uh, Bella, you would be the top boss. Krakow, you'd be his lieutenant. We'll be back every year to collect our cut. Uh, it's reasonable. Let's break out some of your drinking stuff and celebrate the syndicate. They're just all going to go with um, Oxford or whatever his name is, Oxman being the, the head guy? Like, Krakow's okay with it? The other guy's fine with not even getting it. Any kind of rank? But I do have reservations about your solution to the problem that a starship will be sent each year to collect our cut. I propose that our cut be put into the planetary treasury and used to guide the Iotians into a more ethical system. Isn't that logical? All right, Bones, in the language of the planet, what's your beef? <laughs> What's your beef? I left my communicator. In Bella's office? The translator is the basis for every important piece of equipment every, we have. Every you really think it's such serious? Basis. Serious. A few years, the Iotians made a man a piece of our action. 
What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that, that was that was quite abrupt. Well, I don't think I'll be going too deeply into this episode because I don't think it's supposed to be taken that seriously. Definitely one of the sillier episodes. Just an excuse to have fun, to, you know, let Kirk let loose a little bit, get to play a little bit of a different type of role and character, to get in character with these mob bosses. And it's kind of funny that in the end they I mean if you don't t think about it too seriously because otherwise it could be catastrophic right because a book caused all of that so what would the technology of a phaser and radio transmissions and all that do well the communicator specifically I guess but the fact that they're basically making the same mistake that the horizon did in leaving something behind that is definitely going to have a big impact on where their civilization goes from here on out. The solution to the situation seemed a bit simplistic and, you know, it, it was just... It was an episode. I don't think it's one of my favorites. It was definitely fun. I think it's going to be a, like a really fun to rewatch. Um, so I don't think it's bad. But the characters on the planet weren't necessarily the most likable guys. So with Harry Mud, with the I Mud episode, it was really wacky, really silly. The actors got to go out of their normal zone that they usually stay in with their characters and stuff. But Harry Mud has a lot of charisma. He's a really likable guy, is like this scoundrel. This one, I wasn't really too much of a fan of the local inhabitants too much, but I do think this is a very excellent example of why the Prime Directive, which to be fair, we still haven't talked too much about it in the episodes that I've seen. Most of my knowledge about it is coming from you guys, things that you've learned from future episodes and future series. I think they really get all the details kind of hammered out like in the next generation or something, it doesn't matter. This is a great example of exactly why the Prime Directive is so important because just leaving a book or a phaser or giving them some kind of knowledge that they wouldn't normally have can put their whole planet, their whole government, civilization, just everything on just this crazy trajectory. So I do like that we get an example of what can go wrong and how things can go wrong if the Prime Directive isn't followed instead of just what we have been getting, which is, well, Kirk, you know that you're not supposed to mess with them, but then we do because it's for everyone's benefit and it all works out in the end kind of thing which we assume it does work out in the end but i mean we don't know where these planets are going to be in a hundred years when kirk does his kirk thing i have a feeling that this is going to be an episode that a percentage of viewers of you guys are not going to enjoy are going to say that this is not an episode that you really care for because uh, some people have mentioned in the past that they aren't really a fan of when they go to like Earth or an Earth-like planet and it it doesn't feel like they're going and exploring strange new worlds and meeting different alien creatures and things like that and I was kind of feeling it in this one too like I kind of was just wishing that we get on the ship and go somewhere else see some new sites and meet some interesting people and yeah um i'm just feeling a little bit lukewarm on this one at the moment but who knows that could change kirk and eventually spock taking on the vernacular and the personality of the locals was very entertaining probably the highlight of the episode for me and I, I don't know, I just, I don't really have much to say about this one. But as always, I am very interested to hear what you guys 
think and if you guys can give me some more insight that would help me to appreciate it a little bit more or why this episode is maybe one of your favorites or something that I didn't really think about or catch on, please let me know. Oh, and the costumes were great as well, of course, can't forget that. But with that, that's it for today, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!